Hello there. Hopefully you can all hear me okay. Um, I'm sorry I can't be there in person today, but I'm coming from the other side of the world, um, from Adelaide, Australia. And what I'm going to talk about today for a few minutes is uh, research in uh, collaborative augmented reality. So as uh, humans, we really want to be able to connect uh, to each other. And uh, John Pierce said that communication is not only the essence of being human, but also a vital property of life. The great thing is that augmented reality allows us to support new ways to connect to each other. So what I'm going to talk about today is three ways of connecting, using augmented reality to share attention, to share views, and to share spaces. And in our lab in Australia, we're really working on the uh, collaboration, the overlap of, of three research areas, and that's looking at how we can combine natural collaboration, experience capture, and this understanding in an area that we call empathic computing, which is really about developing technology that allow people to communicate and share experiences together. So a year ago, we developed a project called Empathy Glasses, and this project combined together three technologies, uh, an AR display, a eye tracker, and a special pair of glasses called Effective Wear. And these uh, three technologies allowed us to be able to share eye gaze and face expression in remote collaboration. So the effective wear glasses are glasses that recognize expression on your face using uh, photo sensors to recognize the um, muscle movement in your face. And so by doing this, we can transmit remote expressions to other people. So when we combine these three things together, we can use um, an eye gaze pointer to remotely share with where somebody's looking to somebody else. And so in this video, what you're going to see is one person performing a task and look oh I'm not oh okay can you see what can you see um, slides at all oh okay let me just uh, pl start playing that video again then so on this video what you'll see is one person who's um, uh, uh, assembling blocks together and then sharing that to a remote person's view and the remote person's trying to help him. And you'll see on the video a, a green dot. The green dot is the pointer of the remote person trying to help him. And the red dot is the person's eye gaze um, who's doing the block assembly. So on the right-hand side, you can see the person who's wearing our hardware um, assembling these blocks together. And then we live stream this view to a remote person who's watching them. And you can see the uh, green dot is being moved around. That's what the remote person is doing with their mouse. And then the, the red dot shows the eye gaze of the person performing the blocks together. And what's important about this is because we can share the eye gaze, it means that we can share the attention of the, um, the uh, local worker with the remote person. And so it changes the nature of video conferencing to be able to support more implicit uh, communication uh, cues. And with the effective wear glasses we have, we can also share face expressions as well. And so you can notice when the person's being, being uh, concentrating because they're being confused or um, if they're happy or whatever else. So this is an example of how you can use AR to share uh, views. Um, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to show you next is how you can share, use AR to share um, spaces. So in this uh, project, we have a person who's wearing a 360 uh, video camera, and he's live streaming it to another person who's in a VR headset. So the VR headset user can look around as they like in the 360 camera. And then the VR headset wearer also has a uh, leap motion on their head, so they can then uh, capture their hand gestures and send it back to the first person. And in each of these cases, it's very important to know where the other person's looking. So we have on the VR side a red square that shows where the person who's uh, streaming the video is looking and then on on the the other side the video streamer has an AR headset on and so we can show with a green square where the VR person is, is looking as well so the most important part about this um, interface is that the 360 video allows one person to share their uh, surroundings with another person so you see that um, in this clip here
So what you'll see first of all is this is the um, 360 uh, view. So the red um, rectangle shows the person who's streaming the video where they're looking. And then, of course, the VR user can look wherever they like. So they can look around the real room. And then you can see these gray hands appearing that uh, enable the VR person to provide gestures back. So if I'm in the AR view, I see this virtual hand floating in my space. It can kind of show me how to do things. And they can work um, together to collaborate on real-world tasks. And so this is very nice because it means that the, the AR user can um, share a representation of what they're seeing, and the VR user can easily show what, they're what, what they should be doing. We also have this uh, arrow appearing that tells the person where to look, so it means when they're not aligned, they can know where they should look to see where the other person's looking. So you can see here what they're doing is that the um, VR user is telling the AR user to move this fruit on the table and move it around a little bit. So it becomes a very natural way of uh, doing remote collaboration. However, in this case, we're just sharing um, the uh, video. What we'd really like to, to do is, is share the whole 3D environment. And so this video shows how you can do that. This is a, a recent work we've done on mixed space collaboration. Uh, in this case, what you could imagine is you could go into a, a person wearing an AR headset, could go into a, a new a room, and could, using some technology, could scan the room and create a 3D model, and then remote share it with a remote person in a VR headset. And so now the person in the VR headset feels like they're in the same environment as the person in the AR headset, and they can work together. And of course, in this case, the VR headset user can walk around the room in, in, in 3D, and the AR person can see them as a virtual person beside them. And you can share virtual body cues. So in this case, we use an HTC, HTC Vive, and we share with somebody who's wearing a HoloLens, and they, both of them have leap motions on their heads, so we can capture and share gestures between the two people. And we represent each of the people by a, a virtual um, head bust. And one of the other things which we do which is a little bit different is we share a view frustrum. So you can see the virtual pyramid coming out of the, the head, and that shows what the other person's looking at. So I don't need to look at the person's face. I can tell what they're looking at by these view frustrums. So in this video, you'll see this working. So you can see here, first of all, the two spaces. Now, in this case, I'm looking directly at the person in the AR view, and I can see this pink head and the uh, green lines coming out of the head. And I'm in the, I'm in the VR view myself, so I can see a virtual representation of the space, and the other person will see me as a virtual head superimposed over the uh, real uh, world. So in the next short part of the video clip, you'll see um, w uh, the view frustrum of one of the people, and we're trying to ma manipulate these blocks that are floating in space uh, around us. So there's the head of the remote person I'm working with, and here's the AR and VR views um, together. Now, of course, because we have a virtual representation of the real space, we can do some things that we can't normally do in the real world. And so in the next video, what I'm going to show you is how we can scale our bodies up. So if I'm the VR user sharing uh, the person's real world, I can make myself much bigger or much smaller um, as I want to. So what you see here is, is you'll see um, person, two people working together, one person in VR, one in AR, and they're dropping cubes and cones, uh, cubes and spheres down in space. But also in a second, the person's going to change their body scale. There he goes. So now the person in the VR environment is a giant looking down at the, in the real world at the person in the AR environment. And so he becomes much, much bigger and gets a God's eye perspective. And if he wants to, he can also scale his body down to be much, much smaller. And this might be very useful if you're trying to collaborate with groups of people where you want to scale yourself very big and see a whole group of people working at once. So you'll see in a second the person um, scaling himself down, first of all, to one-to-one -one scale. And then you'll make it go down even smaller to um, a tenth body size. So now he's very small, and if he looks up, he'll see a giant AI user, a giant hand um, uh, of the other person pointing in the um, virtual environment. So there's the giant hand uh, coming down here. So the nice thing about having a copy of the virtual world or the real world is you can do things that you can't normally do in the, um, the real world. So... Just to finish, I've shown you examples, several examples of how you can use AR to support new types of remote collaboration. And what we're seeing in terms of technology trends is more advanced displays, technology for capturing space, technology for capturing gesture and eye uh, tracking, and also capturing and sharing emotion. And all these things can combine together to uh, enable us to build uh, empathic tele-existent interfaces, which means that you can now 
feel like you're inhabiting somebody else's body and sharing uh, their feelings and experience. And of course, there are many, many applications for this. For example, being able to be a emergency responder that can explore a remote um, collapsed building, to be able to do surrogate tourism, education, and so forth. So, just to conclude, as you can see from these videos, um, augmented reality enables new types of collaboration. We can share focus of attention, we can share views, we can share spaces. And there's also this trend towards empathic computing, which enables you to share what you can see, hear, and feel. And of course, there are many, many directions for future research, and that's what we're working on here in Australia. So I'm sorry, again, I couldn't be there, but here's my contact details. If this is interesting for you, please get in touch, and I would love to talk to you all further. So thank you very much for your time uh, this morning.